Hello YouTube, welcome back over to Gaming House, home to reviews, gameplay, commentary, all that fun gaming stuff. And for today's video, this is a review of Battlefield 1. Now Battlefield 1 is produced by EA and was developed by EA DICE. You know, the guys that have been working on pretty much every Battlefield at this point. And for my version, I was playing on the Xbox One version. I do not have enough money to be willy-nilly on a PC, you know I have one. So, as always, we're going to go ahead and start off with the story of Battlefield 1. I guess, first off, Battlefield 1, the setting of this first-person shooter is World War 1, which hasn't been done a whole lot uh, outside of the PC realm there. But we'll go ahead and jump into the story. You, the set up the story as more of an episodic kind of thing. You have several of these war stories, as they call them, which is pretty much a campaign of itself. You play between two to three levels on average for most of these and because they're referred to as war stories you can actually play these in in any order you want you can play level two first if you wanted to go in chronological order or you could just go ahead and jump right into the last one labeled six because uh, they are not con connected or intertwined with each other at all they're just war stories of individuals at the time period and what they're doing some of them are more themed uh, such as there's a pilot one and there's one that's a tanker. The other ones are all infantry based. For a plus of the campaign, I, en I enjoyed each of the war stories. I actually enjoyed them a lot. I enjoyed the characters. You know, you don't spend a whole lot of time with them. And I enjoyed the map layout. These map layouts are actually like fairly large. They're pretty much the multiplayer maps for every single one of them. And they give you freedom of approach. You could approach it how you see fit for pretty much I think almost all of them. There's nothing that like narrows you down to a corridor or so. Like you, here's an area, tackle how you, you see fit, head on from the sides, flank around the back. You can do all that stuff. And of course, with their Frostbite engine, the cutscenes in this game are actually very pretty along with the graphics. Now let's get into some negatives of the campaign. The campaign is tragically very short. You can knock this down easily in four hours or less, uh, depending on difficulty and... There's not much replay value in it, unless you want to go back through, collect all the feed manuals, get all the challenges done, or just go through on a harder difficulty. Other than that, there's no real urge to go back through it. A another issue I had with the campaign is, of course, with the stealth-oriented ones. For whatever reason, every other crate all of a sudden has a suppressed weapon, which was n not used a fuck ton. I mean... World War One was mostly fought with bolt action rifles, and they already stretched out enough, including as many automatics and, and other weapons as they did in the game, and now all of a sudden in these campaign stealth segments, every other weapon's all of a sudden got a suppressor attached to it. So now to the meat and bones, of course, the thing that everyone really cares about, which is the multiplayer aspect of Battlefield 1. Now Battlefield 1 sees the return of many previous game modes, along with a couple new ones, uh, unfortunately, out of the new ones, I've only played one of them. The other one, is, there's one called War Pigeons. I have not tried that out yet just because of that ridiculous sounding name. And unfortunately, at this recording, I haven't even looked up gameplay. That's terrible. Terrible reviewer. How dare I? But I did play Operations. I've played Conquest and Rush. So, of course, with the multiplayer aspect, they did change a lot. And since I talked about the game modes, we'll go ahead and talk about the game modes I did play for Rush. They changed it up to where the enemy does have to leave the area... Uh, the new attacker spawned has now marked out of bounds. I, I'm glad that's happened. That's a lot, thing a lot of rush players have been wanting to happen is the, the the defenders need to get the fuck out of the attacker spawn, and they make it out of bounds finally, so they have to leave or die, and that is fantastic change. I enjoy uh, for rush. They've added a, at least the time limit was short in the beta. It's it's a little bit better now, but uh, I'm not not necessarily a fan of the short time limit. That's all I got in a rush. Let's go ahead and talk about Conquest, uh, which is something which, my my opinion, is going to clash with a lot of hardcore Battlefield fans, you know, if more than people, five people actually, like, watch this. Uh, but that is, I actually enjoyed the beta, where, for Conquest, they changed it to where you had, tickets only bleed out through the flags. You had to capture the flags and hold the flags. Uh, kills did not deplete tickets. And I actually like that more because that forced players to actually fucking play the objective in an objective-based game mode instead of one big TDM. And unfortunately they changed it back to that, which of course I would imagine appease some of those that were not liking that change. But of course now it plays out like a large TDM with a 
bunch of snipers that like to sit in places that are right by an objective and not take said objective and instead just snipe from near an objective and not take it. So now we have operations that I played and operations is kind of pretty much like Rush except more roided up with a combination of conquests instead of arming objectives you're capturing flags for an area and once the attackers take the flags in an area they, adv they advance to the next uh, line of defense and defenders have three attempts to stop the attackers from taking it and all this takes uh, place across multiple maps you're pretty much playing this tiny mini campaign and that's actually kind of cool uh, I, don't, I didn't mention it at the beginning but I haven't played Battlefront at all that game did appeal to me so I know they took several features from Battlefront and I can't remember if this was one of the modes that is quasi taken from that or any other features but my, uh, my only uh, problem with operations is players. Players, unfortunately, is what's going to determine whether or not this game feel the operations feel balanced or not. Uh, in particular, because the attackers get three attempts. And after they fail the first attempt, they get their power vehicle, which is, you know, the Zeppelin, the Behemoth, the Dreadnought. And they get that for two more attacking turns, which is, of course, what can uh, determine... Uh, a, a match sometimes. But of course if you have experienced players on only one side of the team they're more than likely going to win versus if it was more evened out or if there's just noobs on both teams it's just a clusterfuck all around but clearly those that experience that like say the Zeppelin if Ze anyone that's played long enough uh, for in operations they will know where the AAs are so when they get the Zeppelin they can immediately start targeting the AAs and take out the only form of defense they have. Next up let's go ahead and just talk about the general multiplayer aspects such as customization, battle packs, all that good stuff. Or bad stuff. For instance, battle packs. I don't know what the fuck they decided to do with battle packs. Battle packs are no longer earned by leveling up as far as I know. Uh, you instead get them kind of at the end of the game and it's kind of random like sometimes it's pretty consistent with like the top players that are displayed. Uh, that'll get one or two of those guys will usually get a battle pack and then others are random. But other than that, you don't really get anything out of these other than like weapon skins and puzzle pieces for like melee weapons that by chance you might unlock through the puzzle pieces and gun camos which so far none of them look really appealing. They're, half of these are like the high tier ones that are super rare, all like these gold and silver colors like flashy fucking cod shit classes you have standard four to pick from and actually there's more than four there's the elite classes there is tank the tanker class which you choose to spawn and say like the vehicle the horse or planes i'll just call them vehicle classes there's vehicle classes if you choose to spawn in one of the said things before the horse tank or a plane you actually have a class that comes with this so you're not like in the previous battlefields you would pick like i don't know recon and when you jump out of plane you have a recon class no, not this time. When you jump out of a plane, you actually are in the pilot class, which has its own weapons and gadgets. Which I find actually pretty kind of cool. Uh, getting back to the base four classes you pick from, there is Assault, Medic, Support, and Scout. Uh, we'll talk about the first three real quick because there's a there's problems with the last one. But uh, Assault, that's mostly close quarters. They get SMGs and shotguns. Uh, they also are your anti-tank, as they have dynamite, anti-tank, bundle grenades, and the only form of, like, handheld rocket in the game, which is the AT rocket gun, which can only be used if it's mounted on a wall or if you're prone. And pretty much on their own, they're not much of a threat, but a group of those guys, and they will fuck tanks and vehicles up. Next is Medic, and anyone from the previous battlefields will usually say, like, Medic's a well-rounded class, or sometimes OP. In this one, I feel it's in the well-rounded class aspect. They have a bunch of auto-loading rifles, ones that have magazines or these high-capacity clips, or the ability to load high-capacity clips. And they're, per they're pretty much your mid-range guys or so. They can pretty much pick off from any range or so, sometimes beat out even close quarters. Uh, they only have one or two automatic weapons in their selection. Uh, but a problem with their class is part of the revives, of course, you know, medic can revive people, and that shit, you have to be, like, basically touching the man's dick to fucking revive them. I don't know why the range is so short, but it has gotten me killed and others killed multiple times trying to revive people. 
Next up is support, which is actually, I've actually played a lot of support this go around. Uh, support is more of a middle ground for me. I've had a lot of fun playing support because it's, I've knew what to unlock, sort of. I just kind of went with gut feelings and what my other friends have unlocked, which is you need, like, machine guns with bipods on it, because when you set up machine guns with bipods, then you start to wreck people. Uh, but other than that, on their own, they're not very... The machine guns aren't very good. They'll get outshot by everything else, unless you get, like, the drop, or, again, you're set up in a position with a bipod out. Uh, other than that, going toe-to-toe -to -toe is not usually a good idea, uh, unless you got the bar. The bar fun functions more like an assault rifle than a machine gun. Uh, support is, of course, also your ammo guy. They also now have the repair tools. So now it's support that's got to go around repairing vehicles better if they want them to get past a certain point, because now if a vehicle gets past certain health, they uh, will not be able to self-repair anymore. They actually have to have someone with a repair tool fix them up a little bit before they can self-repair again. And they also have mortars, which... Yeah, that, that might sound bad to some people, but actually the mortars, I find this one, they have a really short range, so if you're getting mortared on, the guy that's mortaring you is actually probably like somewhat close by, and you can actually search him out and find them. And now, finally, the Scout class. Now, I've never been a fan of snipers in video games because they never play the objective. They're usually not balanced, and in this case, this is a classic example of them not... This is like actually the worst... The worst I've ever seen a sniper rifle base class like balanced at all. These guys, I don't know why the other Battlefield YouTubers have not talked about this more. The scout class is OP as shit versus infantry. Absolutely OP as fucking shit. Most of them are two hit kills. Added into the fact that each one of these, well at least most of them, besides like one or two which have like very low damage compared to the other variants of it. They have a special one-hit kill zone within a certain range. It'll never be close up, so like if they're point blank, it's never going to be a one-hit kill, unless it's in a fucking head. But at certain ranges, I think all the lowest that some of them start is 30 meters. 30 meters, uh, and then out to another certain extent, is that is a one-hit kill shot. One-hit kill shot fucking anywhere, or at least in the body. And that's a fucking death. And that has been nothing but fucking irritating. It's, debil it's debilitating. I can't use words now. That's how much that class upsets me. And I'm guilty of using it just because it's it's OP as shit. You get out to a certain amount of range, get on a rooftop, overlooking an objective, and you just just start one hit killing people that don't have a don't don't have a fair chance to turn around and shoot because it doesn't need to be a headshot or anything. It's like nope, just boom, dead, boom, dead. But that's just the scout class on its own. It's also got a crippling factor in the fact that it is incredibly easy to snipe in this game. The only thing you have to actually adjust for is travel time of the bullet. And that depends all on the rifle you're using, or you can just kind of figure it out on your own, or use Simtech, etc. But there, there is very little bullet drop for weapons in this game. It's practically non-existent, in fact. The only thing you have to really adjust for is things that use explosive shells... And yeah, pretty much that's it. Anything that has some form of explosive projectile, that's what you actually have to compensate distance and stuff for. For weapons, you could pretty much just aim across the map and it's bound to hit the person. Which is really sad because that's one of the things that like Battlefield is usually praised for, is the somewhat realistic sniping mechanics. You have to have skill in order to snipe from across the map or like a fairly large distance away. Is You had to adjust distance person moving if they're not moving. You had to do all this shit and now it's just no. You just simply aim down and shoot. Which adds to the fact to adds to the OPness of the Scout class, which is again something I don't know why the other like Battlefield YouTubers are talking about. This shit is OP. It's OP, and no one's fucking talking about it besides like forms and other shit. Like it's it's been all over the place. People are like, yeah, no, it's this great, it's great sniping. It's like, dude, but it's it's OP. Like you can't say it's not OP when you have a one hit kill fucking zone. But anyway, let's let's talk. Let's let's enough about that. Let's move on to other things. Uh, for whatever reason, again, I don't know why DICE has not implemented this. We cannot customize classes like at, a ma at the main menu. You have to be in the game or on battle log. And another annoying aspect uh, with at least vehicle customization is you not only do you have to be in the game, but there has to be a vehicle ready to be selected in order for you to actually customize the vehicle, in order to change the skin, in order to change the loadout or change your weapon for that class, tanker, pilot, and cavalry. 
that weapon had that weapon not weapon the vehicle has to be ready to spawn you can't be like saying battlefield 4 as long as the vehicle was in the game you were able to go in and customize it from you know your the uh customization in the game not in this one no and unlike in say battlefield 4 we don't have like a quote-unquote training area to go in where we could just go ahead and select all our shit you have to be in an actual game and something has to be ready to spawn in order for you to select it and customize which is so fucking irritating and annoying. Why Why can we not still do this shit at the main menu? Destruction has finally decided to come back despite, you know, claims from Visceral for Battlefield Hardline that, you know, they can't really do destruction on next gen and shit. Well, looks like you're fucking full of shit. But Destruction's finally come back. It's not to its fullest extent of Bad Company where you could level everything, but you can destroy a decent amount of the buildings as well as create craters and such in the ground from heavy amounts of explosives being used, which is a welcome return. However, there's a caveat to that, and that is one or two of the maps within Battlefield 1 have very little destruction, despite being... One of them, at least, is completely urban. It, it takes place pretty much all within the town. Immediately, the action is going to be within a town setting, and it, there is very little fucking destruction. You cannot go in all the buildings, and it's, it's basically a Call of Duty map. It's basically that if they, it's it's their version of Operation Locker, Operation Metro, except with the case of Operation Locker and Operation Metro, you at least took place mostly inside or so. This is a fucking town where you finally brought back destruction and we can't level most of the fucking town. Another issue with uh, the regular gameplay is the knifing animation. Does that seem to trigger half the fucking time? Same with trying to use the bayonet. Sometimes you just do stab damage. I've stabbed a guy three times in the ba I've stabbed people to death sometimes instead of getting the animation. I Because the best way to do it is just come up behind someone and just start spamming the melee button and hopefully it triggers. A cool addition to the game is the use of gas grenades. Whether you find them annoying or not, they are at least fun to use. Uh, definitely pretty annoying if you got like support class which you know i rock support class was the times so i rock two <laughs> you get two gas grenades sit down some ammo and restock your gas grenades if you want to lock uh deny an area but of course uh the mechanic of the gas grenades is is you know you'll slowly start losing health the longer you sit in gas grenades but every every class has a gas mask so you can put on a gas mask you'll be safe in there uh the caveat to that though is is you can't aim down sights while using the gas mask you can only hip fire so it's a it's a pretty cool mechanic to use for like say like rushing areas uh popping a bunch on enclosed uh, objective areas and then everyone has to put on gas masks and kind of shoot from the fucking hip <laughs> other remaining miscellaneous issues is uh the game has crashed for myself and my friends every like now or now and then uh it's random it occurs it's i think one of us one of us a day will at least have a crash on us uh it did not launch with hardcore mode i don't know why that's a weird thing, but Horde Mode will be, uh, not Horde Mode, ho Hardcore Mode. I don't know if I said that three or four times, but it's Hardcore Mode. I'm talking about that. That did not come at launch, uh, besides the custom game aspect, uh, which I I haven't touched a whole lot. But when cus custom, it looks like when custom games comes out, that's going to be that's gonna be great where we're allowed to control things. We can actually lock off some uh, classes and shit. So in other words... Friends and I are definitely looking at, uh, you know, locking off that scout class if it remains to be unfucking touched. But that's not in it right now. But uh, that'll certainly be interesting when those all come to fruition. I don't know if I'm using. I should not use fancy words if I don't know how to properly pronounce them. But uh, that's pretty much all that comes to my mind currently. So let's go ahead and let's get into the scoring. For those who don't know how my scoring works, I go on a one to ten basis. Uh, the only deviation from other that other than that is I can do point five, and point five simply means that I didn't. It had enough good points, but not enough good points to get it to the next like ranking for say like nine to ten. If it was a nine point five, I thought like oh it was it could have been perfect, but you know there was just some things holding it back, you know. And for Battlefield one score, uh, given based off of course my experiences, my opinion, playing on the Xbox, of course. Because uh, some of you PC people will forget that I mentioned Xbox and will say things that are different on the PC and not the console version. Just saying. They're different. Occasionally. But, score. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and give it a 7.5 out of 10. Uh, I feel like they did do a lot of good steps. Some like complaints that have been mentioned in Battlefield 4 and everything else. But they finally, they finally implemented things that we wanted. But at the same time, they did things... 
that were steps back, like such as we still can't customize shit in main menus. Uh, the squad shit's also a little funky. Uh, that's that's from Battlefront front I hear, but again, I didn't play Battlefront. And the fact that the scout class is OP as shit. That, that was buffed from the beta. Why was that buffed? Why'd they make it fucking better? So yeah, obviously balance, some balancing issues. Uh, the campaign, while fun, was also really short. And I'd at least recommend, if you don't normally play through campaigns, at least play through it, especially for new to Battlefield, which there appears to be a lot of plenty of people, especially those that have been jumping over from COD. Uh, at least play through the campaign, because it at least serves as a tutorial for both the basic functions of vehicles and other things. But that'll do it for this review. If you enjoyed or have any other feedback on how the video was done or just want to discuss how Battlefield uh, was in your mind, go ahead and comment down below. As always, like, comment, subscribe, all that fun youtube -y stuff, and check out the channel for more videos, Gears of War, other things. Uh, I'm not sure what I'm going to do. I probably should be uploading some Battlefield 1 gameplay. I've been skipping out on recording that. But as always, you're welcome to come back over to Gaming House for more gameplay and commentary.